The following is a rebroadcast of the 1992 Tri-State Tournament of Champions. Be sure to join Doug Brown and Dan Murphy on Sunday, October 11th, for a brand new season of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Two weeks ago, number four seed Mike Morgan caught fire in game two, rolling to a big 455 and a win over Glenn LeBlanc. Last week, Mike faced his brother Tom. Again, it was game two lightning that did the trick, a 150. But there was also a memorable moment in the third. Oh, oh look at this. Look at this. Man. He got it. The spread eagle for a spare for Mike Morgan. Today, Mike Morgan tries to make it three in a row, this time against number two seed Dave Richards. This is week four of the 1992 Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, 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 24! Yeah. Oh! From Park Place Lanes and Wyndham, featuring outstanding candlepin bowlers from all over New England. You're gonna hear some noise if this is a strike. Got a shot at it. Yes! Got it. Oh! Oh, wow! Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your host, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. I'm Doug Brown, along with Dan Murphy. It is week four of the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions, and that means semifinal week. And in singles, that means we're down to just three bowlers, one of whom is going to walk away with $1,500. Yes, and we can't seem to get rid of the Morgans. There's still another Morgan <laughs> hanging around. Mike Morgan, uh, all he does is hit 400 and win. So uh, another great test for him, though, Dave Richards. All right, well, let's meet the bowlers right now, in fact, uh, and get this thing started. Our number four seed, he's won two matches already, bowling 400 or better each time already in the Tournament of Champions. From Lynn, Massachusetts, Mike Morgan. Okay, Mike comes in averaging 125, 188 for high single, 474 for high triple. And of course he has uh, strung together big scores uh, in beating first Glenn LeBlanc and then last week beating his brother Tom Morgan. So now he goes for his third win in a row and in order to do that he's going to have to get by our number two seed who's been waiting around for him from Woburn, Massachusetts, Dave Richards. Okay, and Dave comes in averaging 125, 191 for a high single and his high triple 468. All right, now in addition to the big money uh, on the line, of course the runner-up in this show will take home third place prize money of $400. The winner moves on to next week and a chance for the big cash, but also we've got big cash in the bonus ball contest at the end of the show, $150 up for grabs there. So lots to do in the next couple of hours. We hope you'll stick with us here on the wins. The Tournament of Champions continue right after these words. Don't go away. Week one was dominated by Glenn LeBlanc. The last two weeks have been taken care of by Mike Morgan, and he is going to go for his third win in a row now against Dave Richards to try and get into the championship match. Dave will try and say something about that before this is over. Of course, the winner of this one gets Paul Berger next week for the large paycheck. Mike Morgan to start it. Two weeks ago, a 4.55, and then last week, a 4.02. 5.7 is looking at Mike. Piece of wood that should help if he's on the five. Yes. No problem. See, the wood is just perfect to carry that five pin, uh, the seven pin. All they do is nudge the five pin. Another big first ball. Trying to convert the 5-8 to make it two in a row. No. But a 10, 28 after two. And here comes Dave Richards. 
Dave qualified for the Tournament of Champions back on October 27th. He was the first to qualify, in fact. Very first series champion of the year. He beat Peter Flynn. Dave is also the lowest seed to advance to the Tournament of Champions this year. He was a number three seed when he came in. And he'll take the spare. <laughs> Was a little high in the wood, so the ball didn't carry the eight pin, but he got some nice sidewall action, and just before it falls into the pit area, knocks the eight pin down. And a big nine drop. Of the six bowlers that advanced to the Tournament of Champions in this field, four were number one seeds. One was a number two seed, that was Stu Bergman, and Dave Richards was a number three seed, and he starts off with two spares. Interesting mannerisms the bowlers have. Neither of these two bowlers will watch the other bowler while they're bowling. They just kind of look away. <laughs> and Mike trying to convert the half Worcester for a spare nearly did it. And a 10. Well, they haven't had a pin standing yet. See those three pins go down for the 10 box. Oh, what a hit. Got a good view from back here. That ball was right there all the way down. You knew it was going to hit the pocket. Now the 10 pin. Right there. Mark number two for Mike Morgan. Dave Richards working on his second mark here as he steps up. Dave's ball breaks sharp from right to left. He's got to control it with speed because he really turns the ball over. Might have heard Dave. He knew he had missed that as soon as he hit it, as soon as he let it go. And a 10. Control it with speed is what I mean, is if he slows the ball down too much, the ball's going to break real sharp at the end. So he tries to keep the speed up to cut the break down. There's a good break. Two pin into the head pin, leaves just the 10. And Joe Paglia will have to go down and check that wood. It is in play. Should not be a factor. Well, it was a factor as he played it <laughs> for the spare. I don't know if it's intentional or not, but he certainly did come in contact with it. But And we're still perfect. Yet to leave a pin standing. Mike Morgan working on a spare. Oh, yes. <laughs> that ball looked like it was three feet in diameter going into that one three pocket. Two in a row. Third mark of the string. Looking for the double strike. A little heavy that time. Ooh, and no break on the wood going into the corner. I've seen the 6-10 or the 4-7 in this case split and got the 10-pin or the 7-pin depending on what side. I've also seen it played on the inside of the 4-pin into the 7 and back across off the wall. Mike tries to do it the conventional way and gave it a run. And we finally leave one standing. 86 through 6 for Mike Morgan. Dave Richards working on a spare. Talked about Dave beating, coming up from that number three spot to qualify for the Tournament of Champions. He came in as a number three seed and he beat in order Joe Willett, 
Bob Kaliri and then Peter Flynn in the championship match. Dave just breaking by the three pin. He had the three, five, and six. Makes it for the 10, though. Within four pins. Each bowler with three marks, and Dave is on the Brooklyn side this time for the diamond. Three, five, six again, plus the nine pin. Oh, nice shot. He made that look very easy. And it's not, as you will see. Usually you want to hit that full, and that's exactly what Dave did. So Mike Morgan now comes up in the seventh. Both of these guys working on pretty good strings right now. If they can keep up the current pace. 179. Piece of couple, three pieces of wood that should have should be a help. Actually, they might have cost him that shot. <laughs> 10 bucks. Still only one pin left standing so far in this match. That nine box by Mike Morgan in the sixth. Oh, what a hit that was. The head pin almost stood right back up next to the five pin. Big strike is right. Dave Richards working on a spare. Misses the head pin, but not a bad break. One, three, and seven pins left. Seven pin drop on the spare. You can see Dave almost cupped that ball. That's what gives him the break at the end. Dave and his wife Beth live in Woburn, Mass. And he missed, the, missed it in the same spot twice for seven bucks. Dave does most of his bowling at the Melrose Bowl and uh, works for MVP Sports. Back on the head pin, looked a little full. Did, got a good break out of it though. Just a 10 pin. He's trying to tell the, ten, uh, the piece of wood to roll off. It does. He's got a clear shot now at the 10 pin. And he's right on it. For mark number five, all spares so far for Dave Richards. Mike Morgan with two spares and two strikes to this point, as you saw. This is on a strike. Oh, that close to a double. And this is going to take a little waiting, I think. That wood. Well, I think he's just going to drive the ball right straight. He can get by the wood, but I think he's just going to drive the ball straight through the wood. The only fear is the ball going up and over the seven pin. Bang. Still looks awfully strong, though. Throwing that ball week after week in the pocket. Week after week, we all know these are taped in the same day, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, a strike wow. on spare. That was a strange one. They all seem to come forward. Wow. Just kind of crumbled. 146 plus two balls. Shades of a couple weeks ago, opening game. 
155. Oh, there's a double! Double strike and the tenth, he'll have one more. It just is effortless for it really Morgan is. here, it really is. He is, he just, everything seems to be clicking. The timing and everything is there and he just looks so strong. And their pins are just jumping off that ball. Already at 156 with another bonus ball. That looks good too. Oh! 66. Can you imagine if that those three were up in the game a little bit more? What a game he would have had. That's the second time we've had that happen uh, in recent weeks, a triple strike in the 10th. And then Dave Richards comes up and punches through a three fill on a spare. Now in the eighth, before he filled that spare, or before Mike got up and throw the spare on strike, Dave was leading by a single pin. And now he's down by 17. And opposite 30 <laughs> right in the 10th. So he only can hope to stay at 17. <laughs> and he'd have to throw his own triple to maintain a 17 pin disadvantage. That's not gonna happen. So from one pin ahead, He's going to be down by almost, uh, well, 40-some pins. Well, Mike, Pretty close to 40. Mike Morgan put up 70 pins in the last three boxes. Incredible. And like you said, just effortlessly off, off the ball. It just Everything was flowing. These bowlers can make it all look awfully easy when that's happening. Oh, that was a lob. So it'll be a six, six. box for Dave Richards and a 125 opening game. Next to Mike Morgan's 166. Look at that finish. Strike, spare, triple strike. We'll be back with game two in a minute. Dave Richards getting some encouragement from the crowd here at Park Place Lanes. As always, the location for Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And a big strike to start game two for Dave Richards. Dave said, I'm just not gonna roll over and play dead here, or I'm gonna come right back with my own set of marks, and there's one. That's his first strike of the match. And he dropped that one a little bit right on the foul line, kinda give it a little bounce. It's gonna be difficult because if he tries to split the three six, the wood is gonna deflect the ball. Mm. Uh, he didn't wanna do that. So just 23 in the opening pair after that strike. Well, four of the last six balls Mike Morgan has thrown have been strikes. <laughs> so let's see what happens here. Actually four of the last five. <laughs> Mentioned we tape Candlepin Stars and Strikes here at Park Place Lanes, which is located on Route 28 in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Should you be in the area, stop by. Say hello to Nick Moskilly and the fine staff here and enjoy some Candlepin bowling of your own. Not far from Route 93, off exit three. And while in Wyndham for Candlepin Stars and Strikes, the cast and crew of the show sometimes eat at Amore Pizza located right across the street from Park Place Lanes. Our family tradition is unlike the rest. We start from scratch and we make the best. Amore Pizza. Two, four, ten left for Mike and there's nothing but to do is just to try, try to drive the ball straight through the wood. Have the wood take the ten, the ball take the other two. No, didn't happen. Kind of a roadblock with that piece of wood. Yeah. 
Well, Dave Richards picks up seven pins in spite of only getting 23 in the first two. Oh, Dave put up two fingers and he got robbed. <laughs> he only got one. And he redirected uh, one of those fingers. <laughs> uh. Oh, oh great recovery. ball. That's a strike ball right there. What a recovery. Just take out the two pin and get the rest of them. Easy. <laughs> Just spare leave. <laughs> Tough break there through the middle. For the second straight time, Dave puts six on a mark. Reminder that right after this show ends at 1 o'clock, stay tuned here on the Winds for semifinal week on the Stars and Strikes Doubles Tournament of Champions. Also brought to you by the folks at Tri-State Megabucks, the presenting sponsor every week during the year of Candlepin Stars and Strikes, but this is their premier event. Added prize money and it always generates a lot of excitement throughout the season. This is our fourth annual singles tournament of champions. The first one in doubles, so you won't want to miss the action. Semifinal week for the doubles tournament of champions comes up immediately following this hour here on Stars and Strikes. And Mike slips by the four pin. One of the few marks, legitimate spare leaves that we've seen him miss in the last three weeks. And again, same spot. So quietly, Dave Richards has picked up 14 pins through the first three boxes. And obviously, come in trailing by 41 with two games to go. You've got to think of it in terms of 20 and 20. 20, and 20 right. That way you lose by a few. Yeah, I was going to say, which of course would mean you lose by one. <laughs> but you get the idea. Same pin, four pin. Just missed it twice. He's got to be thinking about that. I'd say he's going to nail this one. I'd say you're right. And we're going to take a timeout. Mike Morgan in the lead. About at the halfway point. Semifinals. Tournament of Champions rolls on in a minute. Dave Richards trying to cut into the lead of Mike Morgan. A little thin, but uh, if things hold as they are, he may have a shot. It's going to go right down the center, try to grab the five pin and that wood, and get everything moving for the other four pins. Uh, oh, no. The seven. See the reaction to Dave. And a 10 box. Deserved better. Absolutely. Let's see how, what happened with that seven pin. Ooh. Oh, all around it. Everything went all around it. A little thin again. Another kind of painful leave. <laughs> the two, six, eight, and 10 with wood, which Dave is trying to yeah. move around. He did, and it could be of help. He's got to be on the two pin. No, he's going to miss the two pin altogether. You heard it. Dave said to himself, you got to hit him. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike Morgan, who saw a little bit of his lead chipped away in the early boxes of this middle game, now has a chance to uh, reestablish that lead. He's working on a mark as he steps up. Remember three years ago, Mike Morgan won three straight matches in the Tournament of Champions before losing a spectacular match to Bob Moran. He's going for his third straight win in this year's tournament, and he's got an eight drop. 8-10 left, and all kinds of lumber in front of the eight. Yes. That's mark number 10. 
Watch him just carry him the ball off the right piece of wood. Wood takes the eight pin, the ball takes the 10. See, I think maybe it would have been tempting for a lot of people to try and shoot that, that other piece of wood. The You're absolutely right. Piece to the that's, left. That's why a lot of times you watch these bowlers and how they play the wood. Because sometime, somewhere down the line, you'll have a shot similar to that and you'll know how to play them. And you'll hit it right there and it'll stand up and you'll blame Mike Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Now Mike has recouped what he lost and gained a pin. So he now leads by 42. Oh, I take it back. He leads by 33. No, I, I was right the first time. It is 42. Got a, uh, a miscalculation on the computer. Well, sometimes the keyboard jams. And sometimes the operator jams. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Richards ekes out a spare in the seventh. Now it's correct. Mike Morgan's lead, 42, as you see. Who just caught the head pin that time. Seven and a half pin drop. <laughs> <laughs> Might be better off with that pin St up. Standing up, right. Then you have to. Oh, he's got to hurry. No, oh, he got oh. it. Went off the back. Just got wow. enough of the seven pin. <laughs> Two in a row for Dave Richards, so. Mike Morgan going to try to answer the call and come back and try to fight off this charge of Richards. Mike Morgan at the halfway point of the match at 226. Shooting at the 5'8. With no wood. Got it. Very crisply done, too. Looks real sharp. Has he ever come on here and not look sharp? Well, it's easy to look sharp when you're hitting 400s, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble is the bowlers he's bowling against have been bowling decent scores, but they're kind of overshadowed with the performance that he's putting on. Well, this will bring the crowd to their feet if he can convert this. Only three times that Mike has been here has he not hit 400. And those three scores were 397, 396, and 372. Did he get it? No. Excellent try, though. He scared it. 376, did you just pulled two games? <laughs> 95. Well, big spot in the match right here as we take another look at that near miss. Dave Richards cuts into the lead with whatever he puts on this mark, and of course he would love to hang a couple more there in the ninth and 10th. Uh-oh. Dave knew as soon as he let the ball go. So it's only a two, Phil. Dave waiting for that wood in the back to settle down. And he'll have to settle for a seven. Oh, well, that's got to be distressing. Goes up there on a mark and he knows that he's got to make something happen here or trail by 40 or more going into game three. Dave's had four marks in this game. Three spares and a strike, and he's filled a strike with six, followed by a seven box, another six and a spare, seven and a spare, and a deuce. So the fills haven't been what he's wanted. Well, nope. here's another mark in the tenth. Let's see what he does here. That's All of them this time. Unfortunately, he doesn't have room to keep throwing. 124, crossed over in the 1-2 pocket this time. 
And the result is another strike two, on spare. 249 for Dave Richards through two. Mike Morgan is already at 261. 249, right about his average at 125. Four eight for Mike. Got to have the four pin. Bounced it down there, but got it anyway. This fourth mark of this string. All spares. Hasn't thrown a strike since the triple. Well, there's only so many <laughs> to each bowler. He used up his quota in one box. He threw five in that one game. <laughs> Five strikes in the first game. That's more strikes than I get in a month. <laughs> you get in one game. Off target. Five. Oh, yes. I was just going to say he's going to lose, lose some of his lead, but not very many. But now I'm not so sure he may lose any. In fact, he'll increase it. Anything over? Four pins, he'll increase the lead of 42. Ooh, through the middle for four, and it's a 124. So things stay the same after two games, the lead is still 41. Mike Morgan trying to make it three wins in a row and get into the finals. We'll see if Dave Richards can stop him right after these words. The applause is for Mike Morgan, who has 290 through two games. And as you see, also has the lead. Well, somebody from the crowd said, come on, Mikey, start off with a strike. He very nearly did. Everything but the 10 pin. Get a shot of his backswing. His backswing is he's perpendicular to the floor at the height of his backswing. Right there. Big backswing. No. It's gonna be a nine, no. Took the piece of wood in the channel. So that's a nine box for Mike Morgan. Mike thought he was playing bumpers there for a second. <laughs> Which, by the way, speaking of that. Oh! Big spare for Mike Morgan. He comes right back in the second box after missing the first one. Great recovery there. Cleared those eight pins away. Perhaps you could describe that, Dan. It's uh, quite an innovation for kids. Uh, it's really... It's really taken uh, off. Yeah. And basically what it is is like big inner tubes that we put in the channels, the gutters, so the little guys, little gals can throw and knock pins down. They get immediate gratification from the game rather than a frustrating first experience. And just see that Dave convert this spare. And personally, I know Nick Muskelly and a lot of the NACBA members, but from my own experience, uh, tremendous amount of birthday parties with real young children because they use the bumpers. That's the future in this game, the youngsters. Well, it's just a great idea because so how many times, uh, I mean, both you and I growing up, you see youngsters trying to play the game, and, and it gets very frustrating because it gets tough to keep the ball in the lane when you're you know, little and trying, first trying out and so forth. Dave Richards puts up two spares here to start the third game. Fine shot right there. Just to carry it one step further, uh, a new bowler, regardless of his, his or her age, mm -hmm. Um, when I'm giving lessons, I'll use the bumpers a lot of times because that way it eliminates one problem. They want some instant gratification of knocking pins down. And when you don't have to worry about that, they'll knock things down. You, you can concentrate on the little basic things, the steps, the approach, the arm swing, and things like this. So uh, it's quite a teaching tool as well. 
Now, we've talked about how great it is, and there's no doubt about that, but what I want to know is, is there anything we can do similarly for golf? <laughs> can we put big, you know? Well, you know, <laughs> I found the one secret. Play early, early in the morning when the dew is still on the green, and drag your putter from the <laughs> ball to the, to the hole. <laughs> We need all the help we can get, Doug, you and I can't look <laughs> off. <laughs> Four seven for Mike Morgan. Looked like it would be even better than that. It's a spare leave nonetheless. Oh yes. Mark number 15 for Mike Morgan. Two weeks ago, he had a Tournament of Champions record 21 marks when he beat Glenn LeBlanc, throwing that 455. Dave Richards got a st mini string. Two marks in a row, seven pin drop again. Three, eight, and 10 pins left for another mark, not this time. Dave upset with himself. He was going to wanted to string things together here. He knows that he, well, he's probably thinking that he's got to mark every box because he knows Mike is going to mark some before it's over. Lead is 34. However, as you can see, Mike Morgan already has a spare in the fourth. Dave, that little rocker step before he, he starts his approach. Well, this will be an interesting, uh, try, especially depending on where that wood ends up. That's well, going to freeze against the five pin. It'll be the two, five, and seven. May hurt him if he splits him. Oh, perfect. Played it inside, and he matches Mike Morgan's spare in the fourth. We'll pause and return on the Tournament of Champions in just a minute. Mike Morgan steps up working on a spare, leading by 34. This is the semifinal match of the fourth annual Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. So glad you could join us. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. Stay tuned right after our match for the semifinals of the doubles Tournament of Champions. Four, seven on the left with the six pin on the right, trying to split the, oh, just missed the two pin. Oh, oh there's a the cut shot for a 10. Just a little ho-hum shot on the two six. Just missed it with the spare ball. This time he doesn't, he gets it for the 10. If you tuned in late, well, I hope you had the VCR going. Mike Morgan with a 166 opening game, and he's been nursing that lead ever since. He's got the one, two, and seven this time. And the weight is on the wood. Gets ready and makes his approach on the one, two, seven. Oh, oh he's gonna boy. get it. He bounced that ball a little bit. He was off target to the right, he carried it anyway. He was flush on the head pin. Almost didn't even take the two pin. Well, Mike's bowled very well in these three weeks, but he's also gotten some breaks and he's taken advantage of them and he's fully aware of that. He's had a lot of fun with it. Well, when you're bowling good, sometimes, or most of the time, you get the breaks as well. And, and then on the other hand, huh. that was a tough break for Dave Richards. Wood deflected the three pin by the five. Never touched it. Well, Dave is still in a position where if he puts a mark up here, he'll have kept the status quo, but he'll have two fewer boxes. And he 
he's already dangerously close to a situation where he's going to need strikes anyway. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> Dave went down into his full Tony Pena stance, but <laughs> didn't quite carry the 10 pin. And another 10 bucks. Take a look at it. Cut it too well. Yeah. Twisted in front of the 10 pin a couple times, but never knocked it down, never came in contact with it, really. This is a big ball for Mike Morgan. Four frames remaining, leading by 34, plus this ball. Only five. Well, last week it was lane 32 that was, or rather lane 31 that was so successful for Mike and the same pattern has developed this week. He's had three marks in this game, all in lane 31. And last week he also threw a strike on lane 31 for the bonus ball after all that. <laughs> this time a spread eagle. I think I'm just going to stop talking about <laughs> I this stuff. Gonna say. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting stuff, you know. And it really is, until he throws his next ball. And I don't <laughs> think he thinks it's very interesting at all. <laughs> you Kurt Gowdied him. I heard really that. Did. Yeah. Roger Clemens said that a few weeks ago. <laughs> kind of stuck with me. Well, two opens by Mike Morgan, a pair of nines. If Dave Richards is going to do it, this is the time. Two big marks here. He could cut it down and still leave himself room to do it in the last two. But I would dare say he needs four marks. Oh, there's a big one. Throws a double. Throws a double. You know, almost a brand new game. Watch this pin slide over the four pin. Wow. <laughs> Looking for the double. Looks good. A little high. Got yep. a kick, though. Two in the four pins for the spare and a big one. Started as approach and the wood started moving again. Yes. Ooh. The hard way. Well, this means when Dave comes up again, he will have a chance to cut the lead from 27 down perhaps to under 20. But of course, it'll all depend on what Mike Morgan puts up here. Yeah, Mike doesn't mark these final two. Dave Richards is going to have a shot to win it. Well, it's looking better all the time for Mike Morgan, although now he's got the one and the 10 with essentially no wood. Although you never know, that wood in the back now it's moving could into become a, a factor. Yeah. It's moving into a position, position now where it may be a factor. Got to give yourself a ch chance at making it by hitting the head pin. Well, Dave Richards not looking. He knows the scoreboard. He doesn't want to hear the crowd roar with another mark. Well, there it was for a 10 box, though. You know, right now, Dan, each bowler has 16 marks in the match as we get a look at the 10. Each bowler has 16 marks. The difference really right now is that finish in the first game by Mike Morgan. 70 pins and three boxes, including a triple strike. That's the difference in this match right now. That is a big drop right there, leaving the four pin. It's a big drop. It's going to be a bigger mark. Well, would turn just enough so he can still have a clear shot at it. I think ideally he'd want to stay away from the wood. Oh. oh, you're right. Ideally, he would have liked to have stayed away from the wood. Well, are we going to have a fantastic finish here? It's a nine box for Mike Morgan, and he will finish up with a 404. Oh, hum, another 400. This means Dave Richards needs a 155 to tie it. Right now, he's at a, about a 129 clip. 
But he's got two full boxes. Oh boy. This ball is very important. Oh, that's, and he there's gets a, the big break. A huge break. A huge break when that 10 pin. He threw the ball in the pocket. I say it was a break, but he, the ball he was needs, there. Because he needs two marks. He's got to have two marks somewhere in order to get 155. There's one. The work is far from over. He still needs a big fill and another one. Uh, he's got to keep it up by, uh, well, eight and nine fills. Can't have a bad fill. Nope. On the spare. Oh, right through the middle. Gets Once another ten break. Ten. This is not over yet, gang. A mark here and a nine on it is a tie. Right. He need this one and a strike to win it. Yep. That wood is turning a bad angle, though. Yep. Oh, yeah. and that's it. That is it. And you see the reaction. And over on the bench, Mike Morgan just leaned back and threw a towel in the air. Well, the wood was turned, actually, as parallel with the gutter, or the channel there on the left-hand side. It didn't have a good angle to cover the seventh, and that's what happened. Great try, though, by Dave Richards. Terrific finish, double high fives all around, and there is the story, 4.04. The 395, Mike Morgan makes it three in a row. He moves into the finals. We'll have more in a minute. We're back here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, and Dave, come on up. Dave Richards, come on up. We'll keep the applause going. As uh, Dave almost bringing a garrison finish there down the end, uh, did you, you must have known exactly what you needed, right? Yeah, I knew I needed four marks yeah. to go out yeah. with, and... And when he opened in the tent, I says, I got a shot. And I just just threw that ball like I could and couldn't carry that last mark, though. Well, actually, we had a look at that uh, on the replay, and the piece of wood came down on the, lane, on the plate and just missed carrying that seven pin. It was very, very close and uh, a terrific finish. Nonetheless, we have uh, third place prize money for you, $400, the uh, runner-up plaque as well from the NR Trophy Company, and we hope to see you again next season, Dave. Thank great job. Much, All right, Thank you. great job. Thank you very much, Dave Richards. A great finish, just not quite enough to beat Mike Morgan, and Mike Morgan will now try and get us uh, a winner. $150 is in the jackpot right now. And, of course, a couple of sets of brand-new bowling balls from Paramount Industries. This is the uh, third time that Mike has done this. We'll see if we can do it right this time. Eight is the number. Dan, you're shaking your head. No, oh, six. Eight is a winner. <laughs> should, I, should I mention who it is? I guess I probably should. John, <laughs> John Downs from Rochester, New Hampshire. Congratulations, John. Uh, we'll give you all of the check. We don't give this guy any. He'll get a check next week. And uh, congratulations. That means we'll be uh, recycling the jackpot next week, and also you'll be back next week. Uh, well, but know. you had him all the way, right? No, uh, <laughs> let's, let's put it this way. He had a couple tough breaks. Yep. And I, I kind of really, re I was running out of gas near the end, and he came on. I mean, he got robbed three boxes in a row where mm -hmm. one pin stayed up. If they fall, it's over. I, um, saw, I saw your reaction at the end. I think you thought uh, maybe it, it was over. No, right? I, knew, I knew once he didn't get the mark, I had it. I knew he needed that with nine to tie. But I, I think from your reaction, it looked oh, like you thought he was going to get it. No, I didn't, wa <laughs> I didn't want to fill it up, that's all. I didn't want to look for one more ball, you know. <laughs> well, next week, uh, you've got three in a row, so you've come all the way up, and now it's to the finals against Paul Berger. Uh, Nothing more needs to be said about no, him, I guess. Sure. Well, let's put it this way. I'm not going to leave anything in my bag. I'm just going. I got to go all out because, it, you know, if I, if I lay down for four or five boxes, it's too late. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you. All right. Three in a row. Nice job. Third straight, 400. Let's spin you over to the ladder and uh, just set it up for next week as we'll move into the finals in our number four seed, Mike Morgan. After three wins in a row, we'll go up against Paul Berger for all the money. Yeah, we just mentioned that in, uh, a couple weeks ago, how we hadn't had anybody since Pat Pay come up from that position to win it all, and he's got put himself in a position to do just that. All right, that, of course, is next week, but don't go away because coming up in just a few minutes, we've got a semifinal in the doubles tournament of champions for you. And, of course, don't forget, next Sunday at 12 noon, two full hours, our last shows of the season. It'll be uh, big money on the line in both tournaments of champions starting at 12 noon here on the winds but until then for Dan Murphy and the whole crew Doug Brown so long from Park Place Lanes <laughs>